Please welcome once again, Amos Kitai. So Amos, what would you say, besides the fact that you were 35 years older or so, in terms of your experience of making this versus making Field Diary? No, I, I think that, Richard, that the situation is a bit contradictory. You know, in uh, 1982, when I did the Field Diary, before and during the Lebanon, the first Lebanon war, I think you couldn't speak about uh, the Palestinians, uh, their rights, and so on. Now it is, um, you know, everybody is, is aware that neither the Israelis nor the Palestinians will go away. Uh, so one can say this is positive. The, the negative thing is that the political scene is much more dark and the capacity to change the situation is uh, diminished. So, uh, and this is really much more worrying than, than the rest. You know. How does something come about such as this incredible last scene of the backgammon tournament happen? I mean, could you give us a little more background to that? Uh, I was, you know, when, when I decided to do this project, uh, yesterday I spoke about uh, Jean Moreau and that she would, would use to tell me that if she would do a film or a theater, it's because she can learn something she doesn't know already. So I think that when I decided to do it, uh, I wanted to inquire more. And, uh, you know, I think it's very impolite to just go and ask people some questions, but when you have a microphone and a camera, it makes it le legitimate. So, uh, I went, I, I was, uh, also what I said, uh, uh, that I think that the situation is uh, aggravated. And uh, so I was looking, to get back to your, your question, I was looking for the cracks in the wall, one can say. I mean, we all know the, all the bad sides of what's happening. Uh, what are the forces which can actually make it change beyond this dark moment? And actually, the, the backgammon scene is the first scene I shot. I went to Jerusalem just with a cameraman. N n we didn't even have a sound man. We just recorded it like that. Uh, because uh, obviously, it's a, quite an exceptional event. You know, you have uh, every two weeks, uh, once it's in the Palestinian side of Jerusalem. I hope I can say Palestinian side in spite of the Trump uh, declaration. <laughs> I hope it's authorized, you know. So uh, once at the Palestinian side and once on the Israeli side. And uh, I was very struck by the mixity of the public, you know, you, and also the orchestra. The orchestra is uh, composite of people with kippah and the uh, Palestinians, you know, playing the kanun, the oud, and so on. And, uh, and uh, a neighboring guy who had a stand for uh, watermelons, distributed his watermelons. So it's... Uh, these kind of energies of people who refuse to consume the hate messages, because as you have here, we have also our guys, that that's their daily work, is to distribute hate. Uh, so uh, uh, I think it was uh, really impressive. And I was looking for different uh, scene of that sort. There, there are many more that I shot, finally I didn't include in the film and so on. And finally, one of the points that you make in the film is there hasn't been a rabbinism without rabin. Why do you think that is, and you still call that? Uh, you know, rabin, without fetishizing his uh, figure, he was a very particular guy. He's the, he's the general who conquered the, the territories. And then he came to the uh, understanding that in order to stabilize the Israel in the Middle East, he has to uh, trade it for uh, political stability, you know. So he had bought the legitimacy in the eyes of the Israelis, like, like what one of the people say, and he could uh, act on it. I think that uh, the assassination of uh, Rabin is really a, a, a major event in Israel, but also in the entire Middle East is that because, you know, what Rabin is saying here, 
which we cannot hear anymore, is uh, not just we, the security and so on, but also the uh, economic hardship of the others, of the Palestinians. So I think, you know, peace, in my mind, is like a human relation, like love. You cannot do it unilaterally just by force. So you have to acknowledge that the other side exists, that he has their own uh, necessity. And Rabin uh, understood that that's, uh, making peace is, cannot be done unilaterally or, or by rapport de force or some sort of combination uh, of getting a, a superpower to support it and then squeezing the other side, which is what is happening now. Uh, so I think that his assassination is a major event and the, uh, the more moderate forces of the Israeli society didn't find a replacement. Do you really feel yourself that there is a hope that the people who really mean to share, who mean to do something different, have a, any possibility of success? The question is, do you feel that there's hope that the people who do have good feelings or want to work together will somehow find a way to come through? I, I think that hope always exists, but it's also your responsibility here. I mean, it's the responsibility also of the Jewish communities, not just to uh, stand aside and watch Israel being derailed into a reactionary, over-orthodox uh, religious uh, entity, which will destroy its all capacity to exist, in my mind. But uh, you have to act. You have to support these groups, which are civil groups. You have not to be s submissive to, to uh, 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 forces which want to silence them, because that's really the hope. So I think that all of us uh, you know, have a responsibility. If you love Israel, and I love Israel, uh, no, I mean, not the government, but I love the country, you have to be active. You have to take a position. And uh, it is necessary uh, in order to, to preserve it from itself. You know, sometimes when you see uh, in your neighbors uh, domestic violence, you interfere. You don't let somebody kill the other person. I think it's a, it, this, is, this is the case. You know. I just want to ask you in the last scene when it's Jerusalem, uh, the Palestinians, are they Israeli citizens? Were the Palestinians in the last scene Israeli citizens? Uh, not citizens. The Palestinians of uh, Jerusalem are residents. Uh, so they have a, a, a kind of a resident uh, paper uh, being a part of... Uh, I mean, they are entitled to vote for the municipal election. Most of them don't do it because they don't want to recognize the annexation of East Jerusalem. Hi. Well, this, this was great. I think it's like really an important film. I, uh, I'm pretty ignorant of a lot of the history of the conflict, but uh, uh, I want to learn more. And I'm just wondering, has this film been shown in Israel yet? And if so, what kind of reaction did you get? And are there plans that you know of for distribution in this country, either theatrically or, say, like on cable, et cetera? Okay. I think you've been heard. Uh, it has been shown in Israel. Some people liked it and others didn't. <laughs> uh, which one can expect, you know, it's okay. I mean, the different films I did, uh, Kadosh, Kippur, different films that I did in the past, uh, received a similar attitude. Uh, you know, I, I find that Richard knows much more showbiz people than me, but uh, I find always strange that the people in this uh, metier, a lot of them want to be loved by everybody. Uh, I don't love everybody, if it's news. I mean, certain people I definitely don't love. So I think it's fair enough, you know, that, uh, that they have this attitude. Uh, about here, I would like to invite you all to send everybody you know, because it's going to be the American distributor, Kino, found the cinema, the Quad. And it's from Friday on, it's being shown in the quad. So I, I think it's good to send people because as you know, this is fragile and uh, they will count how many, how many people saw it in the first week in order to keep it uh, for a longer time. So I, I'm sorry to make a promotion. <laughs> for someone like the minister you speak to, Zippy, I forget her name, um, 
in a way, when, if somebody had a religious view that God gave us this land, that's it. But she doesn't seem to have that, and yet seems even more radical in her. Oh, she, she is uh, religious. She uh, was recently in this country speaking very badly to uh, American uh, reform uh, movements. You know, so she's not just religious, she's orthodox. Um, but you know, uh, Richard, I don't like, for instance, uh, kind of documentary cinema like Michael Moore. I don't like it because it's for me too much indoctrinary. So I let her speak her mind, you know. If she accepted to receive me and to give me an interview, my obligation is not to manipulate what she answers me. Anyway, I think she does a pretty good job to kill her own argument, so why should I work? <laughs> but where do you think that comes from, that sort of, that, that position? Oh, it's this kind of messianic uh, idea which is uh, very dangerous because, it, uh, uh, you know, politics is, uh, should, should have a component which is rational, and this is messianic thing. When you confront messianic uh, uh, Judaism with messianic uh, Muslim or Palestinian, then uh, one can even use the phrase, uh, let God help us, you know, because uh, this, this is dangerous. So, uh, but this is her, her opinion. And, um, and, and uh, you know, when I include people in the film, I let them speak what, they, you know, speak their mind. The two women you interviewed in the settlement were amazing. I'm wondering if there were other interviews in the settlement that you chose not to use that uh, had different opinions. And one of my biggest concerns, so that's my question, but one of my biggest concerns is the interchange of anti-Semitism as it seems to be rising in certain parts of the world and Zionism and how that impacts some of the settlers you spoke to other than these two women. Mm. Were there others, uh, settlers you spoke to whose interview didn't include no, in the film because this woman found the interview with the two women really remarkable and what about the sort of rise internationally of anti-Semitism and its link to, I guess, anti-Zionism? Um, you know, the, I, I went to see these women. I knew about this uh, uh, particular group uh, around the uh, a rabbi, a rabbi, which is the father of uh, Liraz, Foreman, who, uh, because again, I was looking for uh, contradictions. And, and uh, when the French television commissioned this film, uh, I told him that I will not show them the usual stuff because I'm interested in people uh, that will work to advance the cause beyond the kind of uh, situation right now. And I think that all this group of people, settler, some of the settlers included, uh, uh, may, be, may be part of the solution. Uh, if they don't promote hate and, uh, and uh, so, I, you know, when I showed it to some Palestinian co colleagues like you, they had the same reaction like you, they were very impressed. They never thought that this could exist, but it does exist. Uh, no, the reason is that, uh, and also it's dealing with the question of, uh, uh, you, know, you know, I think that to build all the time, uh, which is this government is working very hard to, to build paranoia and the claustrophobic uh, thing, which enhances itself, which some of it is using uh, also what you mentioned, anti-Semitism exists, it does exist. But... Uh, but then you, you instrumentalize it in order to stay in power, to manipulate the media, to spin media and so on. I think that one uh, should look for the forces wherever they are, and these two women are part of it, which can bring us beyond this moment. And I think that all these people, including B'Tselem, which is giving uh, cameras to Palestinian women, are very important and they are very hated by the current government. So that's why I say they should be supported. Because it's not just the impact on the Israeli-Palestinian relationship, but on the position of women inside the Palestinian society. You know, the, these women uh, don't uh, have to obey to an autocratic uh, model of the, the women just cook and make children, but they become active. Also, it breaks their perception that all the Israelis are nasty soldiers. So I think everybody which brings more complexity to the reading is working for peace. Everybody which, which wants a very uh, binary, simplistic vision of the world is preparing the next war, and I'm for peace, of course. 
It's interesting that you mentioned Rabbi Froman because, uh, first of all, he went to Gaza to speak with Hamas in person. And second of all, um, his group is uh, connected to an Israeli person named Ali Abu Awad on the other side of the wall of his settlement. And my question is that not only, and a rabbi, an Orthodox rabbi and Ali come here up until a few months ago when his visa was denied all the time to talk to congregations here together. There's more of these groups in Israel. There's women who wage peace. There's combatants for peace. There are hundreds of groups either over the radar or under the radar. Is there a chance that a film could be made that would really spotlight all these groups? I know some of them because um, a group I'm involved with is interested in funding them and has. I mean, I don't want to make other filmmakers unemployed, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm sure there is more work to be done. Uh, I found these people, but you're right, uh, more than the people which are in the movies. We're seeing the growing impact of uh, how catastrophic climate change can be across the world. And projections for the whole Mediterranean region don't look good in terms of uh, the coming decades. Um, do you see the work that the Arava Institute does in terms of bringing even Jordanians, Palestinians, and Israelis together to work on issues of climate change as a, a way to peace? Yeah, I, I did a series with Richard. We showed a series I did at the JTS on architecture. And then I did another series about the environment. And the series I did for the educational television, I was looking at rivers. So just to give you an example, there is a, a river called Alexander, which is going from the West Bank, from Nablus, to the Mediterranean. But obviously, now that this government doesn't want to do any cooperative project with the Palestinian authorities, the sewage of Nablus will go to the Israeli side. <laughs> At the same time, there is another river, which is called Kidron, which is going from uh, Jerusalem and with its sewage into the Palestinian side. So in a way, the environment invites us to do a cooperative uh, uh, jobs. The, my concern is, um, I don't want to over-repeat it, is that this uh, uh, government in an in a arrogant, uh, power-driven uh, manner, encouraged by the current American administration, wants to abandon this project. So, again, you have some work to do here as well. Sorry to give you homework. You know. <laughs> so I have a two-part question. One, was your intention to create a film that is balanced and fair to both sides? And the second one, was this paid by the French government? So, uh, I always make fair films, you know. Balanced is another word, I don't know what it means, you know. When you watch any television, let's say you watch CNN or Israeli television or Palestinian, each one has a point of view, I have a point of view. And I'm not anti-French, by the way. Neither am I, but I think that you failed miserably in showing a balanced approach to the Middle Eastern crisis. So make your own movie. You know. <laughs> and on that note, I... Uh, this happy moment. Right, exactly. To bring this uh, conversation back to Israel. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, I'm afraid, all the time we have. Amos, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Film. Thank you for coming thank as you. well. Yeah.